Hello and welcome. Today I thought I would share how I make a journal from an old book cover. And I think it's a pretty simple process, but it got, actually got a little more complicated than I planned, but still not that difficult. So um, I had already gutted the book before I thought of recording my process, so I'm just showing you how I go about um, taking out the signature of an old book. So you want to make sure that it comes out easily like this, that the pages are sewn in and not glued into the spine, because if they're glued into the spine, it's a little more challenging. So I am going to try to reinforce that spine because it's very, very brittle. And you will see how brittle it is in, in a very short time. Um, I'm going to use that scrapbook paper to decorate the inside and because I don't like to measure I'm just marking it with a pencil and I'm going to cut one piece for the front part and then I'm going to use that piece as a guideline for my um, back piece and you'll see that in a minute and just line up my pencil mark there and cut the first piece Just checking to make sure it's a good measurement. And then, um, as I said, I'll use that piece to cut my second piece. Um, I've said this before, but for many projects, I don't worry about them being absolutely perfect and straight. I really do not like to measure because uh, that's actually how I get in trouble most of the time. So. Um, this is how I like to do it, and I think it, you know, it works fine. You'll see um, how it looks in just a minute. That scrapbook paper has a dark edge, so I decided to put that dark edge on the bottom. Just turn the scrapbook paper the other in the other direction. Okay, so now I'm going to um, reinforce the spine. I was going to add a piece of some cardboard and that masking tape to make it a bit stronger. Um, you'll see the cardboard in a minute. I started getting ahead of myself with the with the tape. And again, I'm this is how I'm measuring my, my tape. Um, I'm not using a ruler. And it doesn't have to be perfect because that's all gonna be covered up. I take out my Fabri-Tac glue and then I realize, uh-oh, I have to cut my cardboard. So I used, um, cardboard from an envelope as you can see uh, that I got in the mail and um, you know I use a variety of cardboards that I get from packaging from um, you know wherever you can get some cardboard and I don't want it to be too stiff the cardboard but just enough to provide strength to the spine um, because as I said before it's very very brittle and you'll see that in a minute, um, I'm just getting trimming that cardboard packaging to get some straight edges. So then I can do my measuring trick with the pencil. <laughs> and you want to cut a piece that is just short of your spine. If you're doing it this way, just short of your spine and the same width as your spine. So first I'm going to cut what I'm hoping to be a straight piece, but you can see there that it's crooked on the left side. Um, I don't know what happened there, but I, I straighten it out later on, so it all turns out fine. And um, anyway, once you cut it, if you're reinforcing a spine of a book, you can generally just use one piece, glue it in there. Sometimes I make it a little bit bigger, because you can always trim it down, but you know, if it's too small, that's no good. You have to cut another one, another piece. And that's how I figure out that it's not straight. So I just straightened it out. And then I'm gonna go glue it in. I do a lot of gluing in this video, so I try to um, take out those parts because you don't need to see all that. So that's a pretty good size. And now as I'm trying to just make sure it fits well. You can see there the spine just came right off. So instead, so now I have to build a new spine. So 
I have to cut new pieces of cardboard because now my cardboard has to be a little bit longer than my original piece because it's going to be a new spine of the book. And I'm going to cut two pieces and glue them together because now I need it to be a little bit stronger again because it will be a new spine and not just a reinforcement of the existing spine. So that's what I'm doing. I'm cutting two pieces and I'm going to glue them together and I will jump ahead a little bit in just a second here to, um, again, I'm just showing you that how I measure with my pencil um, where to cut it. And um, I'll glue those two pieces together and then I'll come back. I don't wanna you know, bore you with a lot of gluing. I use my Fabri-Tac glue for a good part of this project because it's really strong, but it's so hard for me anyway, to get that glue out sometimes. So there I've glued those two pieces together. That's my new spine. It's the same size as the old spine, basically. I didn't change it. So now I'm going to glue the masking tape on there because I have to hold my, put my book together and hold that spine in place. So again, I'm gluing, gluing, gluing. I'll take out some of this, but I did wanna show you how I put the masking tape down. You want a lot of glue, especially on the part where the spine is connecting to the book covers. I was thinking about gluing it upside down like that, but then I decided not to do it that way. So I put lots of glue in that area that I was just mentioning where the spine is connecting. And I do that for both sides. Now your masking tape doesn't have to be super straight because it's gonna be covered up just so you know. So I've got that going in place. You do want to have a little uh, crease there so your um, book can open and close easily. That needs to be connected a little bit better so the glue has to dry up a bit. And this is pretty fast drying glue, fairly fast. So there I've done that on both sides with the masking tape. And then I need to let it sit for just a few minutes to dry and I'm just showing you, kind of jumping ahead, I'm showing you that I'm gonna glue that piece of fabric in to cover the tape and the, and the stuff there in the spine area and then I'll glue my scrapbook papers on top and it'll look beautiful. All right, so first I have to do the same uh, technique with the masking tape on the outside to hold this whole thing all together. So lots and lots and lots of glue. <laughs> Make sure, I just want to make sure that that masking tape, you know, doesn't come off later. And again, your tape doesn't have to be super pretty because it'll be covered up also with another piece of fabric. So I've got that all together. This one, um, I don't think it has to dry as much because the other side has already dried. So it's kind of already holding together, if you know what I mean. And, well, maybe I do let it dry for a minute. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanna cover up the top and the bottom of that cardboard, because you can kind of see it. So I have this kind of ribbon or maybe seam binding. I'm not really sure what it is. I picked it up at a, um, I think at an estate sale quite a while ago. And I just cut two little pieces and then I'm gonna glue one to the top and one to the bottom. You can use any kind of ribbon for this. You could even use some cheesecloth or something like that to just cover that part up. It's not the prettiest um, seeing the cardboard there. So once I um, put that on there, I just need a little extra glue. And now I'm gonna to switch to using my Dries Clear Art Glitter Glue. Um, it's not, doesn't have glitter in it. It's a really strong glue too. And it's great for fabric and paper and things like that. I use it all the time. I really now prefer it more than the Fabri-Tac just because the Fabri-Tac is so difficult for me to squeeze out of those bottles. And the Art Glitter Glue um, doesn't, ha I don't have that problem. And um, it does dry clear, so it works well for gluing things on like that. So with um, this piece of fabric, I'm gonna use that glue. It's a big piece of fabric, I mean, fairly large, and I just don't wanna fight with my art glitter glue, I mean my 
Fabri-Tac glue. You want to make sure you have enough glue on there to hold that all in place and especially in those creases. Again, you want to focus on those creases and um, normally I would uh, be using like a bone folder because I that's how I learned how to do it but um, of course I didn't have my bone folder near me so just using my fingers and it and it worked fine. So just again just making sure that that's attached really really well in the spine and in those creases. You can always add more glue to the outside edges of the fabric later on. I'm going to let that dry flat like that. I did bend it a little bit but mostly letting it dry flat and that usually gets me the best results. So there you can see just pressing it down, adding more glue on the edges and the corners if you need it. I just keep doing that for a few minutes. Um, just make sure that dries. This glue dries really fast too. So it's a pretty quick process. Now I'm gonna glue those two end papers. And the same thing, just a lot, a lot of glue on your paper. And there's the second piece. Lots of gluing. <laughs> just eyeball that. Again, no measuring. But you can see, I think that looks really nice. So the inside of my cover is pretty much done. Now I'm gonna do the outside. I'm gonna use that piece of fabric. Once I figure out <laughs> which is the right side up, I like to tear my fabric, so I'm gonna tear it into the right size and then I'll glue it down. Same process as before with the art glitter glue. And there you see it. It's a lot easier to do the outside, I think. And you just wanna make sure it's all glued down, especially on the edges and the corners and all those creases and all that. So it looks pretty good so far. I'm gonna add that piece of lace. Oh, wait, oops, <laughs> jumping ahead. I had um, cut down some papers that I ate uh, dyed with acorn ink that I make myself previously and I was going to make it one signature but I decided to fit better and there you can see how that looks a lot better. Um, regarding the acorn ink, I make my own acorn ink every fall. I gather some acorns and I'll leave a link to the video on how I do that because it's really really easy if you're interested. So now I'm going to sew those two signatures in and I cut a piece of cardstock to the same width and height of my book and I tried to uh, separate that um, piece of cardstock into three equal sections so I can do uh, sew in the two signatures and then as you can see I folded it in half and that's the halfway mark of my three hole pamphlet stitch that I'm going to use and then I just marked one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom and that's where my holes go. Um, I'm going through this pretty quickly so if you want to look into this further it's a three hole pamphlet stitch and uh, there are tons of videos on YouTube on how to do this. Um, I just want to make sure that my holes are open and I can see them. <laughs> That's one of the hardest things to sometimes when you're sewing in signatures is to actually see the holes and where you're sewing. So I take my um, two signatures that I've made and I paper clip them together as you can see there and then I'm going to use that template as a guide. I marked the top previously so that um, hopefully they'll line up properly and then I'm punching the holes in the first signature I'll use that one as a guide for my second signature so again hoping everything lines up properly and there you have it um, next I will um, get some waxed thread I prefer using wax thread it's a lot easier for me to sew in the signatures and I think it, it holds really well a lot better than just regular thread and so I cut two pieces that are the um, three times the height of the book that you're um, making and so um, I start from the middle inside go to the middle outside and then you can go to the top or bottom of your signature it doesn't matter because either way it's going to end up the same 
on the end. And then um, I like to go through the spine first and then my signature. I can't do it all together like some people can. And so there you see I go up to the top and then back through the middle. So if you started with the top part, you can go back down to the middle. And so it, that's why it doesn't matter which if you when to go through the middle, if you go to the bottom hole or the top hole, it's all the same. So now I straighten out my or um, tighten up my threads, my yeah, and double knot it. You can leave those long if you want to to add buttons or charms or beads or something like that. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I sew my second signature in the exact same way. And then I had pulled this lace piece out because I wanted to add it to the cover for decor for decoration. And I had that little piece of whatever that's called. <laughs> I call everything a doily so or lace or doily, so um, it's something like that. And I had it laying on my desk and I thought, oh, that would be a cute addition to this. So, you know, sometimes it's good not to really clean up your desk too much because things like that can provide inspiration. So again, I'm using that same glue. It works really well on fabric and paper and gluing that down. I put a lot of glue on okay, it. Okay, so here is how my little journal turned out. I'm really pleased with it, especially with this little closure I made. I didn't record that part because I didn't want this video to be too long, but all I did was I had a strip of this um, canvas fabric that I then attached other strips of fabric to and just sewed around all of them and sewed a sari silk ribbon onto the edge. So that's all I did. I totally stole this idea from uh, Kristen Peterson. She's a very talented mixed media artist and I saw her idea on Instagram and I said oh I'm going to copy that if it's okay with you she did respond and said it was okay um anyway I'll leave a link to her website down below in case you'd like to check her out because she's got some really amazing um projects that she works on and um class on she does online classes and check out her Instagram too um anyway here's how it turned out it has all um, the acorn ink dyed papers, not decorated on the inside. I just love it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.